Hello and welcome to Stories for Hungry Hearts. Are you hungry? I'm not talking about the hunger in your tummy. I'm talking about a hunger in your heart. God promises to satisfy the hunger and thirst of our hearts. And my prayer is that as I share with you stories from the Bible, the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to truth and your hungry heart would discover the only one who can satisfy. Today's story is titled An Incredible Hope. We learned last week that everything in scripture is placed there by God. That scripture is a gift to us to help show us truth and teach us how to live even the parts that are difficult to read. We learn from Josiah's story in 2 Chronicles 34 not to neglect God's word. Which is why we are not going to skip over the long list of names that makes up the first nine chapters of 1 Chronicles. No, we are going to dive in expectantly, expecting God to speak to us and reveal his truth. 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verses 1. The children of Adam were Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mechalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The children of Japheth were Goma, Magog, Mediah, Javan, Tobiah, Meshech, and Tyrus. Let's jump to verse 28 and see if you recognize any of these names. The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. The sons of Ishmael were Neboeth, Kedar, Adabil, Mibsam, and the list continues. Other names that you might recognize that are mentioned in this very long genealogy are names like Israel or Jacob and David. So why has God put this long list of names in the Bible? Do you know what the very first book of the Bible is? Genesis. And do you know what happened in the first few chapters of Genesis? The first sin. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and everything changed. Let's go to Genesis 3 because this is a very important story if we want to understand the Bible. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day, he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. And the woman was convinced. She saw the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. And at that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and the wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. 
now focus here, he, the woman's offspring, will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man, he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it. This is an incredibly sad part of scripture because we see here the consequence of sin. But we also see here that God makes a promise about a child of Eve. That a child will come that will strike the serpent's head and the serpent will strike his heel. Do you see the ray of hope shining into this very dark situation? Do you see that even there, God had a promise of restoration? The whole of the Old Testament shows us just how much we need a savior. And we see it through the stories of people that are mentioned in the genealogy that I just read. Stories of sinful people that need to be saved from their sin. All these stories keep pointing us towards the promise of a savior. And this genealogy that makes up the first part of 1 Chronicles that outlines all the different children of Adam and Eve, and then their children, and their children, and so on, is like an arrow, a signpost, reminding us of a promised saviour who will crush sin. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sin of us all. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get really excited. I'm starting to see how this long list of names is packed with great hope. In our family, when dad goes away, there's a great expectancy for his return. If something breaks, we'll say, oh, when dad gets back, he'll be able to fix that. Or when my children are feeling lonely, I'll say to them, well, when dad gets back, you can spend some time with him. When I'm feeling lonely, I'll say to myself, or well, when my beloved husband gets back, I'll be able to spend some time with him. I'll be comforted by his presence. And there's a great hope because we know he's coming back. And there's a great expectancy for his return. And I share this with you because for me, this is a picture of the expectancy that we see laid out in this genealogy. The brokenness in the stories of the people that are named in these lists is a reminder of our need for someone to come and to fix things. The weakness so evident in these people's lives that are listed here is a reminder that we need someone to come and help us. The sadness and the pain of sin is a reminder of our need for a savior. Our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. That's Psalms 22 verses 4. This genealogy is exactly that. It's a testimony of God's faithfulness and a reminder of the hope that he has given us in Jesus, our Savior. The truth is every day we struggle with sin. We struggle with the ugliness in the world that is a result of sin. We struggle with the ugliness in our own hearts that is a result of sin. We need a Savior. And God has always had a plan. He has always been at work. He is faithful. He fulfilled his promise with Jesus, the child from Eve, who died for our sins so that we can be close to God again. We still struggle with sin, but we don't have to hide from God like Adam and Eve did. Hebrews 4 verses 16 says, 
So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and will find grace to help us when we need it most. And that is what Jesus did for us. He opened the door into our Father's arms and he offered us a hope and a helper. Because of Jesus, this is a story full of hope. Not a story full of sadness. The Bible shares the only hope that we could ever have in this world. And that hope is Jesus Christ. Without him, there is no hope. And with him, we are filled with hope. I want to end off by reading Isaiah 53 verses 5 again. But Jesus was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Lord, all of us are sinful. Every person, young and old, that is listening to this is full of sin. But Father God, you were perfect. You, Jesus, were sinless. Yet you took upon yourself the punishment that we deserved. Jesus, you gave us a gift that is so difficult to understand. We can't even comprehend exactly what you've given us. But Lord, help us to help us to see something of the gift of life that you have given us, of the love that's so deep for us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that we have so much hope. Thank you that we can have so much joy in you. Lord God, open the eyes of our hearts. Open our minds to understand. Help us to see how much we need you and help us to see what a gift you are. Amen. I really look forward to next time where we will continue to explore the truth of God's word and continue to explore the hope that we have in Jesus.